What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 189. And today we are doing quite an interesting one. Oh, I'm so excited for this episode. Yeah, me too. This topic is really wild. We've actually touched on this very briefly back during a ponder sesh, like what, like a year yeah, ago or longer? One of our, like, I think it was actually one of our like intro topics back when we used to do that because this there was a film that was made about this individual named David Huggins mm -hmm. called Love and Saucers. Yep. And I, th I yeah, maybe it was actually a ponder sesh that we I brought think it up was, in, or like a paranormal. Who knows? Yeah. The the time, I mean, just the amount of content we have is just becoming yeah. I don't even remember it's what we did. It's hard to keep up with. But yeah. yeah, we definitely touched on this very briefly and you guys wanted a more in-depth episode. So that's what we're doing today. A little bit of skeptic versus believer too cuz I'd say I'm pretty skeptical about this one and you're well, just on the really, believer side. Yeah, I mean it just really comes down to do you believe that people have experiences firsthand with aliens and are well, abducted by aliens and it no. sort of falls into that realm. It comes down to do you believe David Huggins had an experience because I do believe that people well, if you, have experiences. Okay, well but so I don't you know can if I, I'm choose? just a little I don't know a little on the fence about <laughs> David Huggins himself, you know? All right. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I, I tend to to lean more into people's experience, especially with somebody like David, who's so matter of fact about it. I mean, he doesn't waver at all in, no, in his doesn't. tellings of the story. I mean, he's very, <laughs> very detailed about everything. Oh, yeah. Detailed. This one will definitely require some open mindedness for sure. Um, mm -hmm. If you're if you're skeptical at all, I mean, a lot of people are very skeptical about him and just think, oh, this guy's crazy. And, you know, he's just dealing with other things which maybe that's the case but maybe he really does have all these experiences maybe. with really these knows? aliens and to just preface what this is kind of centered around is that basically david lost his virginity to an alien woman or alien hybrid being oh yeah that was a woman crescent baby oh yeah oh yeah she's so. a hot one <laughs> she and he's she painted is. us a lot of imagery so we can go through it yeah all. he's a he's an artist and and the reason why this film was made just because he has this whole collection of, of paintings mm -hmm. and it's sort of how he recalls his memory. So it, it's, it's really interesting sort of the different methods that people are able to pull memories out of, you know, their brain from years and years ago. I mean, there's <laughs> hypnotism, <laughs> there's all the, no, but there's, there's legitimate, you know, there's, you were going to say out of somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> well, but. I mean, I mean, for some people, I guess it's coming straight out of the ass. But that will be up for you to decide at the end mm -hmm. of it. There's a there's a lot more to his story than what, obviously what Gosh, we just told. Some so. of these paintings are so graphic. I don't know if YouTube's going to allow it. Well, we'll blur whatever's too too graphic. So, because <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, some of them are pretty pretty uh, pretty out there. So yeah, get on board for a wild one, guys. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before we get into that, we have a secret that we've been keeping oh, yeah. for a very long time, and we're so excited to finally tell some of you may already know because i already did announce it on my channel um, but if you don't watch my youtube channel yeah what's the secret babe the secret is that we are <laughs> the <drama>. having <laughs> having an alien oh my god <laughs> it kind of looks like looks it right like now. one right now but <laughs> yes we are having a baby yes we are kendall is pregnant yay I'm so excited. I couldn't believe how quickly all this sort of happened, but mm -hmm. we are expecting a baby in August. Yep. A little Mahar baby. Yep. Yep. I'm in the second trimester now, and I'm so happy to finally be able to tell people my secret because it's been really hard to it yeah, is keep so it under wraps. Hard. So yeah. hard to just hold it in and not tell the world. It is. It's such, such a so big exciting. deal. Yeah. I mean, our lives are going to change completely. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I mean, I'm not sure how things are going to play out for the podcast. If that's, I know a lot of people will be curious about that. Will we be taking time off? Will someone be filling in for me? I'm not really sure. Yeah, well, how that's we're kind of playing it by ear right now. I yeah. mean, everything's going to continue as normal until, we have until otherwise. Like I mean, July. We, to yeah, figure we have that some out, time right? to figure it out. So, yeah, yeah. So, it's, but very exciting. Yeah, it's extremely exciting. Auntie Janelle's very excited because Woo! baby's probably going to be a Leo just like her. Dude, it's close to. It's Could even be on your close, birthday. I know that's crazy. That'd be lit. I hope it's not your birthday because then I'm gonna have to wait even longer. Oh, I'd be like over days after. Yeah. yeah, it's only a few days it's like though. Three days, isn't it? Like, no, it's it's like five days. Five, yeah. Oh, well. But that's not that still, far overdue. I know, but when you're that, when you hit forty weeks, you just want that thing out. I've heard. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know if I'd want to like. Well, wave nature them might have other plans. Yeah, I or guess it's all out of plans. my hands. But yes, very excited for probably a little Leo. Add some fire to our life. Oh, and they're fiery. Like we said, it really does kind of look like an alien the other day when we got our ultrasound. We were joking how it kind of looks like a um, the what's it called? Atacama yeah. humanoid <laughs> body that we, seriously that we talked about. Well, that turned out to be a fetus. Right. And it kind of makes sense because the facial structure looks very similar to our baby's facial structure <laughs> know, at this stage in development. Where I was it like, kind of looked over, like it yeah, like actually looked face, at the sonogram, like yeah. <laughs> face forward. And I was like, oh my God, that's like scary that that's in there. That was like the first thing that came to my mind was mm -hmm. the common humanoid. I was like, uh -huh. well, there you go. There it is. And this baby is already super active. They were literally doing somersaults and jumping around when we Crazy. did the last sonogram. Crazy. And I can, I mean, I can't feel it, but the doctor said it's jumping on my bladder. And it's making me have to pee all the time. <laughs> so love that for me. Thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> My gut feeling on on this pregnancy is that it's going to be a girl. I do kind of feel that way, too. Not going to lie. Some of the wives' tales are kind of leaning that way, too. Yes. But again, they're just wives' tales. So we yeah, don't know for are. sure. And we could be completely surprised. But either way. I've just had a gut feeling, though, since the beginning. But I could be completely wrong. Everyone around us seems to be guessing girl, too. Like, no one I know has guessed boy yet. Which is kind of surprising. Which if, if we end up having a boy, I, I will be very happy. About oh my that gosh, too. I don't care at all. I'm just so, so excited. I can't believe this is, a, I was just telling Janelle, we were sitting in the conference room having lunch and just like, this is a human. This is a, this is gonna be an adult person. <laughs> paying taxes one day. Yeah, paying taxes <laughs> one day. Like, it's yeah. just wild. Having a career. I know. Getting married. I know. And they're just in there bouncing around, swimming in the amniotic fluid. Yep. They're like Michael Phelps and that bitch, though, for real. Yeah. I mean, this thing's active as hell. <laughs> it is. It's doing like flip turns. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll be a swimmer. I don't know. The doctor was like probably going to be a gymnast. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy. very active. Very crazy, kid, though. Which really lines up well with Leo. So <laughs> Maybe they really are. Never. Yeah. We're we, going to have to see. Only time will see. tell. Yeah, let us know what you guys think. I want to have your guesses below for gender because we are going to know, I think, by the next time we podcast, right? No? Uh, no, we'll have one more week of okay. podcasting before we know We know for sure. We'll know pretty soon, early February. Yeah, like two episodes from now. I'm so excited. I'm just so happy. And I'm seriously the happiest I have ever been in my life, Aww, for sure. That's cute. Hands down. Like, I feel like I, I have like new purpose in life. Mm -hmm, I do too. I feel like for so long I've been just serving my own like personal... Mm -hmm wants desires and mm -hmm. goals and obviously our shared goals but now i feel like i'm starting to just think more about the baby before myself a little bit like starting yeah. to kind of transition that way yeah and it's, it's good you're starting now yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> i don't want a rude wake-up call when the baby comes but just it, it's just such a special feeling it's hard to describe like knowing that I'm going to be a, uh, like by Christmas this year, we're going to be parents like what? By Halloween. Yeah. By Halloween. Yeah. By, by my birthday. By Columbus Day. <laughs> <laughs> Columbus Day. Well, that's what you think. Way, but, what uh, day is Columbus Day? I can't remember. I September or something. Know. Who cares? Indigenous uh, Peoples Day, you mean? Yes. That is what I mean. Amen to that. But anyway, we won't bore you guys with more baby <laughs> talk. I am sure there's some people out there that are like, oh my God, this Podcast Get on better with not the turn into a baby already, guys. show. I came here for David Huggins, <laughs> not your baby. Hey, he's got babies he, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's true. We will be talking it's about not... <laughs> some uh, procreation today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big oh, time. yeah. Really fun stuff. Really fun stuff. But yes, thank you guys all in advance for all of the kind comments and support. And yeah, we'll do some updates here and there throughout yes, the process definitely. in the next six months. Definitely. Crazy. I'm sure there'll be lots of fun updates to share. There will. Speaking of updates, though, I wanted to just give a few updates about Higher Love Wellness, our wellness CBD brand. Mm -hmm. We, first of all, we have created a new flavor. It's called Cool Mint. It's really, really good. Mm -hmm. It's nice and minty. It's delicious to just take on its own. It's a CBD oil, or you can add it to your favorite drink. It goes great with teas and coffees. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great way to consume CBD. Make yourself a little mint mocha situation. Exactly. It's great for before bed. It's great in the morning. It is. Anytime. Yep. Also, though, one of the biggest issues we've had is we can't ship anything to Canada right now. But <sighs> Canada, killing us. Canada's got it locked down tight. But yeah, I do. as you can probably see that I'm wearing some Higher Love 
merch, some Higher Love apparel here. We have just launched Higher Love merch. So we have crewnecks, t-shirts, hoodies. There'll be way more stuff coming here soon. But all of that's going to be shipped worldwide. So yeah. if you're in Canada and you're waiting to try on CBD, it's probably going to be a little while. But if you want to support the company or any of you out there want to support our wellness brand, that is now for sale at HigherLoveWellness.com. Yep. And all of our listeners get 10% off with code HOMIES. So you get 10% off your order. Again, we now ship all of our merch worldwide. But I just wanted to give that, put that out there. But shall we get into the very strange and mysterious life mm-hmm. and encounters of David Huggins? So we're going to start here with a clip of David introducing himself. Because I think that would be the best way for you guys to kind of get a, a feel. feel for him. Yeah. yeah. My name is David Huggins. I'm 72 years old, and I live in Hoboken, New Jersey. My childhood was strange to a certain extent. I was seeing things, and my parents didn't. Nobody in my family seemed to see what I was seeing. So David Huggins was born in 1944 and raised on a farm in rural Paulding County, Georgia. He is English, Choctaw, and Cherokee. David had a brother and a sister who lived on the farm with him. Their parents were big drinkers, and sometimes they'd get drunk and hit David with a belt or a switch. His dad also cheated on his mom with multiple women, and the two of them fought a lot. So David's childhood was pretty traumatic. Yeah, he really didn't have a great relationship with his parents Mm -hmm. by any means. It seems like he was kind of on his own a lot and just kind of in the background observing his, his parents' relationship. As a child, David enjoyed working on his family's farm, And he also liked to explore and collect arrowheads that he would find outside. Yeah, he believed that Native Americans actually lived on the land that his farm was on Mm. uh, for many, many years prior. So that's how he'd go out and find. He said he found a ton of arrowheads, which is really cool Mm -hmm. uh, to find. I I can't remember. I feel like I went looking for arrowheads when I lived in Oklahoma because there's a lot of Native American land out there. And I, I think I'm trying to recall where exactly it was, but I remember going out and finding like arrowheads like you could just find them in the in the dirt mm. in certain areas which is really cool wow, that is so really he had a cool. huge collection of, of arrowheads from a from his childhood and i think unfortunately he lost it at some point but uh, oh yeah i know that's Bummer. That sucks but that's pretty cool so his grandparents took him to tent revivals which are evangelical christian church services held in large outdoor tents and the experiences he had there were overwhelming and a bit bizarre they pretty much drove him away from religion as a whole. Yeah, tent revivals can be a very traumatic experience, especially for a young person. Have you person. gone to one? No, I've never been to a tent revival, thank God. But I've never even heard of that. Basically, it, it can get crazy out there. Like People speak in tongues. Uh, sometimes there's churches in Texas and in Oklahoma where they, they there's like a rattlesnake church where they bring a bunch of poisonous snakes in. And it's kind of people that believe like the power of God is going to protect them from these these like poisonous snakes and and different things like that and they incorporate those into their services so it's kind of like taking religion to the extreme in a way from yeah. like a, a christian perspective mm-hmm. um and people often pass out and it, it's it's pretty intense though and i can see how somebody would definitely be turned off by it totally. uh, but a lot of people do partake in the tent revivals so in 1952 david had his first encounter with what he believes was an alien, and he was only eight years old at the time. One day, David was playing at the base of a tree near his house, when suddenly he heard a voice saying, David, behind you. And when he turned around, he saw a small hairy creature with big glowing eyes. I was playing at the base of a tree, and I hear this voice say, David, behind you. And I turned around, and there is this Little hairy guy with large glowing eyes coming straight toward me. I thought it was the boogeyman. I didn't know what to think of it. What was interesting is that for a split second, I felt as if I was in his eyes looking at me. That's really interesting, honestly. His eyes looking at me. So almost like traded places with whatever this creature was. It looks almost like a like a miniature Sasquatch or something. Kind of reminds me of the Nowhere Man from. Yeah. You know, Beatles yeah. realm. Yeah, really interesting. And he just said that like the thing that really got his attention were the eyes. The eyes were just like glowing. 
That's creepy. I would have yeah. run the fuck inside screaming. Seriously, though, if that thing came walking out of the forest, calling your name Hell to, no. Hell saying, no. David. <laughs> so this creature started towards him, and obviously he was just kind of mesmerized it for, for a few minutes, but then he realized, I should probably run away from this thing, because again, he did think that it was the boogeyman. I mean, when you're that young, I'm sure you would have thought of the worst possible case scenario of, of what this thing is. But then the creature turned around and walked back into the woods when he looked back around once he got away. And he wasn't sure what he saw, but he decided not to tell anyone at first. In that same year, David was grabbing something from the barn when he heard a strange noise coming from the other side of it. And when he walked outside, he saw a large alien creature that looked like a praying mantis. That would be scary to see like a human-sized mantis being. That is so nightmarish. Praying mantises are really cool, but really freaky. Like, have you seen those guys like eat other bugs, eat the heads off of fellow praying mantises? Yeah, they're they're badass predators, honestly. Oh, yeah, they're insane. And what's interesting to me, too, is he's so young and he's already sort of there is sort of a theme among other experiencers, as they're called, right. of seeing manted beings. Right. Yeah, we've talked so, about that before. Yeah, too. we have. I think in... Uh, we did like a whole alien species mm -hmm. episode yep. and that's like one of the top ones that people, people claim yeah. to exist and have seen before. So it's interesting that from such a young age, he's already seeing mantid beings. But obviously this really freaked him out. So David started to scream and this creature sprayed him with a bluish gray liquid <laughs> and started to run away. Oh no. And as he ran, he noticed that the liquid was evaporating off him quickly. But David had no idea what to even make of this encounter. He's like, why did this even happen in the first place? The following year, David had another bizarre sighting while he was going to a friend's house. He was walking through a field behind his barn when he started to feel like he was being watched. And he heard a noise that sounded like a cow mooing. And then he saw what looked like a bright glowing head poking up from a nearby bush. And obviously this freaked him out a lot. And all of a sudden, he fainted. And meanwhile, there were small gray beings surrounding him. David heard three beeping noises and then woke up in a field of tall weeds without knowing how he got there. So clearly, he was very confused. So if you think about this encounter for a second, it's, it's interesting to me that these gray aliens, or, or what essentially these beings are based on his description and his artwork, these gray aliens are one of the most notable species that are seen mm -hmm. or experienced during alien abductions. And oftentimes the gray beings are there to do experimentation on, on people. Yeah, that seems to be the trend. So it seems grays. like perhaps these gray aliens were sort of just kind of doing surveillance on, on David and he, mm -hmm. you know, they have the ability to, to cause you to pass out. You know, they have telepathic abilities and things like that. And therefore they were maybe just scoping out to see if he was a good biological specimen mm -hmm. to test on. Mm -hmm. Because then he woke up and they were gone. Then a few years later in 1954, the beings visited David again. He was in a small field hunting for arrowheads when he looked up and saw eight or nine small gray beings falling from the sky. And the beings hit the ground and then bolted towards him. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> no scary. way. No way. So he panicked and he ran back to his house but apparently the aliens chased after him. Oh my gosh. He was so scared and he didn't know what the beings wanted from him. So he tried to hide behind the front side of the house. And when he looked through the pillars below the house, he saw the aliens turn and walk away. And he pictures these aliens um, in his paintings wearing blue suits, which I thought was pretty interesting. I haven't really seen personally anyone else describe them as wearing blue suits have you yeah actually oh you have yeah the the grays do wear like space suits oh but sometimes it, but sometimes they're yeah not necessarily blue yeah. but sometimes they're like skin colored or yeah i've seen know, that but, but yeah blue or orange mm -hmm. so he called these little aliens in the blue suits the grays and that night he saw the same group of grays outside his window the aliens walked into his room and took david outside that's when they grabbed him and he and the beings floated up into a spacecraft. That night, I'm looking out the window, and who should I see but several of the little guys. Then I see them come in into my room, and they take me outside. 
and we floated up to some type of craft. That didn't look like a very friendly encounter either, based no. on his artwork. It looked like he was absolutely terrified. He was kidnapped. Yeah, literally kidnapped by the greys and taken into a, to a craft. Scary. Once on board, David saw a female alien with black hair holding a rod. And one of the aliens held David down while the woman tilted his head back and inserted this rod into his nose. It seemed like she was placing something inside of him, like probing him. After the insertion, David cried out that the woman had heard him. And the woman said, let me see. And when she looked at David, he felt all of his pain melt away. So it was like she spoke to him telepathically. And I think, you know, we're hearing the aliens sort of speak to him, period. I think it's all telepathic communication. I don't think he's actually hearing verbal communication from any of the aliens. In fact, it's all coming through telepathically. So he's hearing it in his head. God, I hate looking at that painting of them shoving that thing up his nose. Yeah, that doesn't look Ugh. fun at all. Ugh. Ugh. It's like bleeding. Ooh. She tilts my head back, a little gray guy holds me, and she thrusts the uh, rod up my nose. She inserted something inside my nose. And after she pulled it out, I said, you hurt me, you hurt me. And she says, let me see. And she looked at me and she made the pain go away. But these gray aliens continued to visit him throughout his childhood. And he said their spacecrafts looked like bright oval shaped discs. And sometimes they would land in the fields near his house, and sometimes they were either darker colored, but most of the time they were very, very light in color. It was totally quiet around David whenever he saw these spacecrafts and all of the noises around him would suddenly stop and he'd hear nothing but complete silence. I think there were multiple crafts, but I only saw them like one at a time, but they were round, oval shaped, very bright. Sometimes they were dark. When they were around, there is just an incredibly beautiful silence. I mean, it was like I was inside a vacuum or something. That definitely uh, is uh, something that a lot, a lot of other UFO experiencers have have uh, mentioned as well. Is that because of the way that these these craft work is that they're you know sort of distorting time and space, so they do create like a, a vacuum. And if you're within the vicinity of the craft, it, it sort of pulls you into this this world where it's completely silent, and you're sort of removed from all of your surroundings. There could be loud noises happening all around you but you, ha you don't hear anything at all it's really interesting it makes you think like other dimension yeah you know? yeah well that that's what could be i mean they mm -hmm. could be traversing through another dimension or mm -hmm. um you know just another layer of, of reality but the beings david encountered definitely scared him as a child but they were never menacing or threatening towards him the little grays looked like they were workers of some kind and David had also met a tall, thin being with a knob on the top of his head. He thought this being was the alien in charge. The praying mantis being spoke to David gently, like he was a child. There is the little greys. They were small. I kind of got the impression they were workers. The hairy guy, it was his eyes that always got me. A tall, thin being, he had a knob on the back of his head. He was like the person in charge. Looks like a wiener. <laughs> that was the insect being. He reminded me of a praying mantis. That's terrifying. He was frightening, but he always spoke to me as if I was a child. Weird. That's so weird, man. So weird. Which one scares you the most? Ah, uh, hmm. Probably the praying mantis, dude. Which one would you want to meet? <laughs> Which one would you want to kidnap you? Probably one of the greys, yeah. The greys? Yeah. Okay. But, but I don't know, because they're sticking probes up your nose. So honestly, none of them. <laughs> <laughs> so David told his parents about these encounters that he was having, but they never believed him. His father would actually yell at him and tell him to stop making things up. And nobody else was seeing what David was seeing. Sometimes David's father would give him a beating, actually, when he claimed he saw an alien. One of the aliens that David met was a female being who he calls Crescent. Once, David told Crescent that his parents didn't believe that he'd seen the aliens and they whipped him because of it. Crescent did not like hearing this. So she looked at him right in the eyes and told him, then don't tell them. And David listened to her and he never told his parents about his encounters ever again. One time, David claims that Crescent saved him from being bitten by a poisonous snake in the yard. Another time, David says he was about to drown when he heard a voice say, let him live. And a root suddenly caught his foot and saved him. He credits the aliens for saving his life. But then in 1961, 
David had his most famous alien encounter. He was 17 years old at the time, and one night he was walking through a field on the way to a friend's house when he saw something weird. It was a strange looking woman sitting under a tree. She had large black eyes, black hair, pale skin, and long black fingernails, and she wore a long blue robe. She and David locked eyes, and this being started walking towards David, and he said he suddenly became very sexually aroused. <laughs> David then ripped his pants off and fell back onto the ground. And that's when this alien being got on top of him and started having sex with him. When he climaxed, he said it was very painful. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting note. Yeah. Painful. Hmm. But like good at the same time. But he said after they finished, he looked into the being's glowing eyes and he immediately passed out. A few minutes later, David woke up, but he was all alone in the field. He was very confused and he didn't know why his pants and underwear were off, so he quickly put them back on and left the field. And he had no memory of the encounter after waking up. It actually wasn't until many years later that David realized that he had lost his virginity to an alien. He also hadn't realized that the alien woman was named Crescent, which was the same alien he had spent time with as a child. It's da very creepy. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, kind of like, like she grooming kinda, him. Yeah. yeah. The whole story, like, <laughs> Just give me the creeps, honestly. Weird. It's very weird. But David ended up having 25 encounters with aliens from the time he was 8 to the time he was 19 years old. And the encounters didn't stop after he had sex with Crescent, though. Two years later, David was 19 and the situation at home was getting to be too much for him. His parents were constantly fighting and they didn't like that David was so invested in creating art. David dreamed of attending an art school in New York City. However, he knew his parents would never approve of it. So one day, David left the house without telling them and moved to New York. And now that he was finally free of his parents, he could create a new life for himself at the Art Students League, which was an art school in New York. One day in 1965 or 1966, David was walking home from class on a rainy evening. The city's transportation workers were on strike at the time, meaning no buses or subways were running. David didn't want to get soaked on his long way home. So he walked down Fifth Avenue and stuck his thumb out to try to hitch a ride. That's when a big black car pulls up next to him, and a woman inside the car asked David where he was going. He politely told her that he just needed a ride across Central Park, and that he would walk the rest of the way home. The woman told him to get in, so he did. They didn't speak much during the car ride, and when the ride was over, David thanked her for taking him. The woman said nothing. She just nodded her head, and David went on his way. He believed that the woman may have actually been an alien. That night, David dreamt that a strange woman was approaching him with her eyes closed. The experience felt dreamlike and surreal, but he didn't think the incident was actually a dream. He didn't remember anything else about the encounter, just the woman's face, which he has pictured here. The dream repeated itself every night for months on end. Whenever David said he'd have these dreams, he would wake up the next morning and hear the words, we'll be back tonight. He couldn't figure out if these encounters were real or just bizarre dreams. So he decided to do a test. After class one day, he bought some pink flowers and left them out for the alien. As he was lying in bed that night, he said, those are for you. When he woke up that morning, the flowers were gone. Whoa. Yeah. That's hmm. a pretty good test there. Pretty good test. The next night, the alien revisited David. It was Crescent the same alien woman that had taken his virginity two years ago. She gave David a comforting and pleasant feeling. She never scared him or made him feel threatened. Her body was quite similar to a human's, aside from her large eyes and very pale skin. David painted a very, very mm. interesting picture. We're going to have to blur Crescent. this one. <laughs> yeah. YouTube's not going to like that. Yeah, he's got very vivid memories of Crescent. I like how she's holding her. <laughs> titties yeah, i know it's awesome it's it's interesting it's like, to me check that out david yeah <laughs> that she's got like human anatomy too i know that's like spot on with a, a female human so unless this is a it almost to me seems like crescent is some sort of like hybrid gray mm -hmm. human being because she's got kind of the gray alien face and head and eyes but then she's got the human body uh and <laughs> and anatomy so it's interesting that she might be some sort of hybrid. Like it could be that the group of aliens that are all visiting David are mm -hmm. involved in some sort of like hybrid being experimentation. It seems like that. And David's sort of the human DNA that they they're using in order to keep the 
the line of these yeah. hybrid beings going or something. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. She's the one that's sleeping with him because yeah. it makes you think maybe she, they think she would be the closest or the one that would have the most possible, most successful chance right. of procreating yeah. with a human because yeah. she's like half and half and half herself. Right, and they're kind of bonded at this point since they did have this experience and intercourse with each other. She's kind of like looking out for him yeah. uh, going forward after after they initially had sex, which is interesting. And that she could have been potentially the one in the vehicle that picked him up that day. Or maybe he just was confused and it was just somebody random and mm. he's somehow tying that back to her. But um, it's interesting that she's kind of like this guardian angel for him too in a way. So that night, David remembered that the two of them rubbed their heads together lovingly and then they had sex on his bed. And the following day, David woke up alone. And Crescent continued to visit him at night, and David grew feelings for her. We were rubbing our heads together. Yeah, next time you're with your girlfriend, start rubbing heads. Trust me on this. <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <laughs> Take his advice, people. <laughs> David fucking knows. <laughs> rubbing heads? Awesome. Is that a thing? Babe, that... we should try that tonight. We Let's just should. sit and rub heads. <laughs> It's very nice. I just feel like what will happen is you'll start rubbing heads and you actually like bonk each other's heads. Yeah. And it'll hurt or you'll hit each other in the nose or something like. It could. But rubbing heads, maybe that's like a secret. Arousal. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I'll have to try it out sometime. Take David's advice. Maybe he's talking about other heads. Oh, that's <laughs> not. Put that Got in there. Him. Maybe, that, maybe that's the joke that David is, is oh, leading to. Okay. Got like, him. Try rubbing heads, wink, wink. <laughs> So David said that the two of them shared a bond and that Crescent became like a girlfriend to him. They would have sex in David's room when she visited, but they were never alone. Fun. Praying mantis creature was oh, always there <laughs> to keep an eye on the whole show. Standing in the corner, just watching them. And they'd leave after David and Crescent had sex. That's creepy as fuck. I feel like yeah. the the mantid being is like some sort of overseer. Oh, like clearly. It's like there to make sure that the sex happens yeah. and that they <laughs> she's she's getting impregnated at mm -hmm. that point like mm -hmm. creepy though so obviously this was an unconventional relationship to say the least <laughs> you think <laughs> but crescent was very loving and a caring partner to david david said he really enjoyed spending time with crescent and then one day in 1967 david was working on a painting when the wall opened up and crescent hurried into the room she was very upset and she told david that the baby was dying. David was like, what? What do you mean the baby's dying? He said, what baby? And she responded, your baby, but it's dying. And David asked to see the baby. And at first, Crescent didn't want to show him, but David just kept shouting, show me my baby, show me my baby. So Crescent picked the baby up from a strange container and dangled it in front of him. Yeah, he describes it as her kind of like flinging him around. Yeah, like, like what are you doing? Because Dave was like, that's no way to hold a baby. Why are you holding it like that? And he showed her how to actually cradle the baby in her arms. And the fact that Crescent didn't know how to hold the baby made David really worried. He asked Crescent to take him to where she lived. And Crescent told him he wasn't allowed to go there. But the baby needed help and he wasn't going to let it go. David tried to argue with her when all of a sudden he just passed out on his bed. And when he woke up, he was standing in a strange alien realm. The insect being walked up to David and angrily asked him what he was doing there. And David told him that he needed to see his baby. But the insect being said no. But when David fell to the ground and wailed, it was actually moved by his actions. It's almost like they don't know what love is. Like David's cl clearly showing like love and admiration for this baby, which they're claiming is his. And the beings at first like, what are you doing, dude? But they start to get that. Oh, he actually really cares about this hybrid baby. Crescent was still holding the baby, but it wasn't moving at all. The insect being allowed David to reach out and touch it, and when he did, he felt a shock of electricity, and the baby actually moved. It was like some sort of energy transfer had taken place and actually healed the child. The insect being then told David to come with him, and he brought him to a strange room full of babies and glass boxes, almost like incubators. David was shocked, and he asked the being whose babies they were. And the insect being just pointed to David. So it looked like David had apparently fathered hundreds of hybrid human alien children with Crescent. The insect being is looking at me, and he says, come with me. 
and we go into another room filled with babies. And I'm looking at them and I say, oh my God, whose babies are these? Oh, no. He points to me. I wasn't so much as creeped out as I was. <laughs> like the shock face there. Just dr- He's jaw like dry. shook as hell. <laughs> Can you imagine? These are that? all mine. What? He's like, yeah, fuck the child so support. Creepy. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, God damn, can you imagine the bill on well, that? Well, I think he actually had a thought of like, I have to pay for college for all these kids at some point. He's like, oh my God, I'm going to put all these kids through school. Who knows how much alien oh college is? God. Like, God damn. <laughs> can you imagine? Oh my God. David realized that all these hybrid babies of his needed help, that they weren't doing well for whatever reason. So, he went and touched every single one of them. They're probably not doing well because Crescent's like slinging them around. Yeah, Jesus. Just like he did before, David touched each and every one of the babies and the energy transfer healed each one of them. And the following day, David woke up feeling exhausted, probably from transferring all that energy. And the insect being visited him that night and brought him to a room full of glowing light. David stood in this room for a few minutes and he felt the energy absorb through his body so that when he woke up the next day, he had an incredible amount of energy that lasted for weeks. It was like he dispelled all of it and then they helped him recharge. I need some again. of that. I know. That sounds, sounds nice. nice. Yeah. The encounters don't stop here though. But before we get into more of David's strange encounters, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Guys, Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and a great way to celebrate is by picking up the new Lux Intimate Gift Sets and Ultra Soft Loungewear that hug better and support longer and love you right back from Third Love. Also, their beautiful Deco Lace Collection is available now. It's Third Love's latest collection that is designed to make you feel sexy 365 days of the year. Putting on this collection feels like indulging in yourself every day. You guys know I love Third Love. I truly mean it. I will not wear any other bras except for my Third Love bras. They're just so much more comfortable than anything else I've ever put on. And Third Love does comfort so that you can do you. Their bras, underwear, activewear, and feel good all day wear are designed to hug better, hold stronger, and support longer. Third Love obsesses over every stitch so you never have to think about how something feels, looks, or wears. Their 100,000 five-star reviews don't lie, you guys. You got to check it out if you haven't already. And Third Love makes it so easy to find a bra that actually fits with their fitting room quiz. It's like a personal shopper, but better. It focuses on size, breast shape, current fit issues, and your personal style to find bras and underwear that are perfect just for you. And we love Third Love here at Mile Higher because they are the largest donor of undergarments in the United States. They partner with organizations all across the country and have donated over $40 million worth of bras to help people in need. Feeling is believing, so upgrade to everyday pieces that love your body as much as you do. Right now, you can get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash milehire. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash milehire. Being a pet parent is a huge responsibility. And since our pets can't talk, we do our best to understand what's going on with them. But knowing something's up with them or their health and not understanding why is one of the greatest challenges of pet parenthood. This is where Fuzzy comes in. Fuzzy is a telehealth service for pet parents that offers 24 seven access to personalized pet care from veterinary professionals. From everyday questions to middle of the night emergencies, Fuzzy has the answers pet parents need through live chat and virtual vet consultations available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is absolutely incredible because most vet offices, I feel like, have the worst hours. And when you need them most, they are closed and you go to an answering service. Sometimes they have an emergency service or you just have to go straight to the emergency vet, which costs so much money. We had one time when Bernie was just a puppy. It was late at night and Bernie was just acting so weird and off, just kind of being somber and, and just something seemed up with him. So we rushed him to the closest emergency. Yeah, we did vet clinic and it turned out that bernie just had to take a poop and we (laughs) spent like 300 dollars for bernie to take a poop at the emergency vet yep that was fun times very fun times right now fuzzy is offering our listeners a free seven-day trial membership go to yourfuzzy.com slash mile higher today to sign up that's a free seven-day trial at y-o-u-r F-U-Z-Z-Y.com slash mile higher. And for a limited time, Fuzzy is also offering a special discount of $20 off any of your pet's product needs. Pet meds, supplements, food, and more with promo code mile That's yourfuzzy.com slash mile for your free trial of Fuzzy 
with access to 24-7 personalized pet care and vet-recommended products. So, in 1968, David had another encounter with the Greys. He was taking off his clothes when he heard a voice say, Everything is all right. Everything is fine. But David didn't think so. He immediately broke down in tears and repeated, The baby died. And it's all my fault. Over and over. The small beings repeated that everything was fine. But David had a breakdown. He flung his arms out and cried, No, no, no. While two alien women grabbed and held him down on the floor. Let's see a clip of him talking about this. I just broke down. I kept saying, the baby died, the baby died. Oh my God, it's my fault, it's my fault. Everything is fine, everything is all right. Everything is fine, everything is all right. But it wasn't fine and it wasn't all right. No, 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 no. I was carrying on, I was spraying my arms, crying. Sounds horrible, sounds traumatic. Yeah, it really does. He really thinks that these alien babies of his died. So that's when Crescent appeared and she ran over to him and said, David, what's the matter? And he said, my baby died. I was holding it and got scared and I dropped it. It's all my fault, my fault. But Crescent told him that the baby wasn't dead. And then one of the female aliens walked into the room, cradling the baby in her arms. And when David saw the baby, all his fear and guilt disappeared. He once again felt safe. The extraterrestrials clearly didn't know that much about raising partially human babies. Once David had to teach the alien mothers about how to breastfeed their infants. The children were both male and female, and their mothers fed them a brown substance that looked like chocolate pudding. Ew. (laughs) That is sick. (laughs) Oh, man. I'm just picturing all this going on. Yeah. Sounds like they were feeding them shit. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. What else is like looking like chocolate pudding? Unless it was chocolate pudding. Yeah, chocolate pudding. Kids living on chocolate pudding. Yeah, snack packs, baby. Calcium. <laughs> At least there's some calcium in there. It could work. Yeah. Could work. Yeah. So by this point, David had fully fallen in love with Crescent. And he said that if the aliens had allowed him to come live in their realm with her, he would have said yes in a heartbeat. He wouldn't have minded leaving the earth behind for them. In fact, he said, the earth kind of sucks. I mean, not literally what he said, but he said, you know, it's pretty bad around here. The yeah. climate is going up, wars and famine. and He wouldn't mind just leaving the earth and joining Crescent. But the insect being decided that David had to go back to earth after each visit. And this made David really upset. He accepted their decision, even though he really wanted to stay. Crescent held him and consoled him before he returned to earth through a special portal. David continued to see the aliens pretty regularly. He'd even have sex with some of their other alien women that were there and available. Very nice. Sometimes the beings would come and visit him in his house, and sometimes they'd take him up to their space realm. Overall, he probably visited with the aliens over a hundred times, he thinks. So he spent a lot of time up there with them. Yeah, lots of time. So when he's gone, I guess people don't know because he's like at home sleeping. Yeah, time time is like on hold. Time right. could be different. Right. So different it, times. Mm-hmm. It'd be like a few minutes that he's actually gone in our time and he's there for mm. hours or days or however long he's you know, there with Crescent. And he could have left his be his body here and then like his spirit or something traveled mm. and he has like another body there so that he doesn't That's even true. look like he's missing or something. That's true. Anything's possible in this story. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> Anything's possible. It's true. So despite all these encounters and the detail that David recalled, it wasn't until later in his life that David actually remembered these encounters. Whenever the aliens came to him, he'd experienced some sort of amnesia after their visits. But on August 17th, 1987, the memory started to come back. Hey, that's your birthday, Janelle. Hell yeah. Just, <laughs> um, I wasn't born in 87, though. Thank you. No. The aliens hadn't visited David in a long time. And by this point, he had pretty much moved on with his life. He had gotten married to a mosaic artist named Janice, and the couple had a son named Michael. Their lives were perfectly normal until David's memories came back. Although the aliens weren't visiting him anymore, he still felt their presence. It was starting to feel like he was being watched. Every new day was filled with anxiety and confusion, and David didn't know what to do with the strange images popping up in his mind. That's when he heard about an alien abduction researcher named Bud Hopkins. 
So David went ahead and purchased a copy of Bud's book, Intruders, The Incredible Visitations at Copley Woods. And when he started reading this book, it triggered something in his brain. And all of these memories came flooding back. I'm going back to the house. I'm looking through the uh, book, and there is this chapter, Other Women, Other Men. And I start reading it. I go, oh my God, this is the woman I never told anyone about. As I was reading it, memory upon memory come flooding back. It was just like image upon image upon image. It was incredibly difficult for David to process everything he had suddenly remembered. He felt scared and alone, and he didn't know what to do. He couldn't sleep for many weeks, and his life was filled with stress and paranoia. It started to feel like he was going crazy. So one night, the aliens visited David again, and they brought him to a meeting. They were trying to decide whether or not to let him create paintings of their visits. The tall alien commander finally said, let David do his paintings. And that was that. David was 50 years old when that meeting took place. The aliens didn't make their own art, but it seemed like they were interested in creativity and human art. David says that he thinks the female aliens' black hair might be wigs that they wore for aesthetic reasons. The hair was usually messy and sometimes looked as if it were lopsided. It took him a few weeks to actually work up the courage to create his first painting of the aliens, but when he did finally paint it, a sense of relief washed over him. And that night, he slept peacefully for the first time in weeks. Finally, he had found a way to release some of his anxiety that the memories were causing him. David decided to keep making these paintings of his encounters. It was very healing to him to put his experiences on canvases and come face to face with them. The images gave him a sense of peace and understanding that he'd just never had before. So we will get more into where David's at today, go over a little bit more of his paintings and talk more about his visits when we get back from our break. For many people, getting financially healthy means dropping the weight of credit card debt. But where do you start when it feels like a never ending cycle? Upstart can help you pay off your existing debt quickly and easily with a personal loan so you can start living your life again. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score, though. This is what makes Upstart so awesome. So rather than just looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to help find the best interest rate for you. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score as well in just five minutes for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. You can even receive your funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash mile higher. That's upstart.com slash mile higher. And don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Again, go to upstart.com slash milehire today. Guys, it's a new year, and who doesn't want to make some easy changes to their personal hygiene routine to make it a little cleaner of a year? That's where Native comes in. Native's aluminum-free deodorant and body washes are never made with parabens or sulfates, and they are both cruelty-free. Beyond their customer favorite, the classic deodorant, Native also offers sensitive and plastic-free options. And their sensitive formula is made without baking soda for those who have more sensitive skin. And the packaging for their plastic-free deodorant is made out of 100% paperboard. And if you can't get enough of Native scents, which I definitely cannot, they are so good, you've got to try their body wash. They're available in over eight different scents, and their body washes have a very rich lather that leaves your skin feeling moisturized and conditioned long after you shower, and I can definitely say that that is true. It's my favorite body wash by far. And to kick off this new year, Native has partnered with Baked by Melissa with a collection of scents that are inspired by Baked by Melissa's delicious cupcake creations. You can choose from tie-dye vanilla cupcake, mint cookie cupcake, fresh peach cupcake, ginger lemonade cupcake, and all of those will make your day a little sweeter. This year, up your personal hygiene routine with Native. Just go to nativedo.com slash milehire20 or use promo code milehire20 at checkout to get 20% off your first order. That's nativedo.com slash milehire20 or use promo code milehire20 at checkout for 20% off your first order. Let's face it, taking trips to the post office is probably not how you want to spend your time. I know it's the last place I want to go, especially when there is a line out the door. Nothing's worse than waiting in line at the post office. 
That's why I recommend mailing and shipping online with stamps.com. I absolutely love stamps.com. We've been using stamps.com for our business higher love wellness for the past year now. And I got to say, it's a lifesaver. Not only is it saving us so much time by not having to drag all of our packages to the post office, wait in line, pay for the postage, but we can do it all right from our computer and we don't have to do it within the hours of the post office. We can do it 24 seven, 365 days a week. Plus we can do it for any size package and we can do it for anywhere we need to send our packages, which is really nice. Plus what I love about stamps.com is you get the services of both, not only the post office, but UPS all in one place. With stamps.com, you get discounts up to 40% off US postal rates and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates, which UPS is a pretty expensive carrier and stamps.com helps save us so much money on UPS postage. Stamps.com is great for anybody, whether you got an Etsy shop or a small business or you're a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, stamps.com can help any business of any size. Stop wasting time, go into the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code MileHire, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, which is super nice. And there's no long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com and click on the microphone at the top of the home page and type in MileHire. That's stamps.com and use promo code MileHire because with stamps.com, you'll never have to go to the post office ever again. So David feels as though he is definitely traumatized on some level from his experiences, which is very understandable. At the same time, he said they were thrilling and very meaningful, and he wouldn't trade them for anything. He thinks that the aliens were using him for breeding purposes, clearly, but he still fully trusts their intentions. The kind of relationships that they had built with David are very important to him. He said he would still leave Earth for them if they'd ever asked. Meanwhile, things weren't going so great in his marriage back on Earth. A few months after David read Invaders, he and Janice got divorced. They'd actually already been having some problems in their marriage, but the alien stories were just the final straw for Janice, and she left. When David sat her down and told her everything, she thought he was crazy. When their son Michael was around four or five years old, he was having a lot of difficulty when his parents split. So David moved in with Janice in their New York City apartment to make it easier for Michael. While they were still separated, he and Janice lived together ever since. David still told his son about some of the encounters when Michael was a child. He explained to his son that the beings in his paintings were extraterrestrials and that they were good friends of his. Michael remembers that his childhood was pretty easy and he was never really concerned about the beings in his father's paintings. He just kind of accepted it. Eventually, Michael moved to Thailand and he got married and he now works as an ESL teacher. And as for his father's encounters, he believes that they really did happen. The aliens have not contacted Michael, as far as David knows. David now lives in Hoboken, New Jersey, and works a part-time job at a deli when he's not painting. He's been living with his ex-wife, Janice, in Hoboken the last 20 years. That's a long time to live with your ex. Yeah. Damn. Even after the sun's gone, there must be something between them still. Good friendship? Yeah. Maybe. He regularly meditates and interprets some of his experiences using I Ching, an ancient Chinese divination text. A book of David's art called Love in an Alien Purgatory was published in 2009. While David approves of the book, he doesn't think the title accurately reflects the nature of his experiences. In 2017, director Brad Abrams actually heard about David's story. I believe it was a podcast or something like that. He just randomly heard about it mm -hmm. and he tracked David down. So this wasn't like David orchestrated this documentary or any of yeah. this to ever come out to the public at all. This was all of the, the producer and, and directors doing mm -hmm. and sort of seeking him out. In Love and Saucers, you actually see where some of David's paintings were exhibited at an art gallery in New York. David's also working on a screenplay of his own about his life. He still makes paintings of his encounters as well. He hasn't stopped painting. The aliens do not want him to make up anything though about the paintings. So David paints only from his memories. And over time, he's created over 150 works of art featuring those beings that he encountered. There is one time I did one painting, which uh, I totally made up. I, I destroyed it. And the main reason why I did it is that they were very upset with me. And it was like, David, do the paintings, but don't make anything up. So he's claiming that everything he's ever painted is 100% real to him, a real experience he had, and that he just would never paint anything that was made up or from his imagination because 
the aliens would get mad with him for not representing them accurately, I guess. But after he had his paintings on display for the art show, the beings actually paid David another visit. A group of young aliens told him that they had a body for him, and he recalls that there was a younger version of his body in the alien realm that he could only get into with the help of the insect being. The aliens might have created this body as some sort of afterlife for David, but he's not entirely sure what its purpose is. Crescent sometimes brings her children over when David visits the spacecraft, but he hasn't seen the kids in a long time. But he remembers that they're always happy to see their father and that they like to play hide and seek with him. And to this day, the aliens still visit David from time to time. And while David has grown older, Crescent's appearance has stayed the same. He usually sees her about once a month. In the meantime, he assumes she's still living her life and raising their children somewhere in the cosmos. A lot of people have asked David why the aliens chose him specifically. And David straight up doesn't know the answer to that question. He's been asking that of himself yeah. every day. I think we would all, all like to happened. know the answer to that. Yeah, absolutely. But the beings have never told him, but he's content not knowing what their reason was. He also doesn't know where exactly they're from, but he doesn't care. Other people's doubts don't affect him because David knows the aliens are real and that's all that matters to him. You want to say they're in a planetary? Fine. They're in a galactic? Fine. Another universe? Fine. Another dimension? I don't know. I just don't know. You know, it doesn't really matter to me. I know they exist. I know they're real. And that's enough for me. I mean, if they ever tell me where they're from, I'll let you know. He's very matter of fact about he all is. of his answers. And, he, and, and it's interesting because like there's people out there who would tell you where they're from, even if they didn't really know where they're from. Right. They would be like, oh, yeah, they're from yeah. this galaxy. You know, they would elaborate mm -hmm. more on the story. But it's mm -hmm. interesting that he's just. Nope, I don't know. They yep. have never told me this is what happened to me, and that's it. Yeah, that he is doesn't something embellish about him. it really that much. I mean, there's, you know, through this whole story we just went through, I mean, there's so many places where it's like just gaping holes of information of like, okay, yeah. well, what happened after that or that? But it's like, it's like pieces that he's sort of put together. I mean, they're memories yeah. that he's recalled. Yeah, he doesn't try to fill it in right. to get people to believe him more, which does make him feel a bit more credible. Right. Well, you know, because it's like, he doesn't he clearly doesn't feel the need for anyone to believe him. No, it's it's very like this is very special to him, almost in like a spiritual way. I feel. Mm -hmm. Like he really connects with it on a deep level. And yeah. it's not about entertaining people like, he, you know, some people are like, oh, this, you know, he's just this crazy guy that's, you know, wants to hopefully get a movie deal or whatever, because yeah, the guy's really big into movies and sci fi stuff. But it's like it doesn't seem like that at all. It seems but he like, is, he's writing a screenplay. Right. Well, now he's writing a screenplay, but it's like, is that screenplay ever going to go anywhere? Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. So it's like, it's just for his satisfaction, probably for him to help give him text to go along with the paintings, too. If you think mm -hmm. about it, like he's got all these paintings. But what if, you know, once he leaves this earth, he wants to leave behind something that explains the paintings in his story? Don't the aliens have to approve that in one of their meetings since they had to approve the paintings? Probably. I feel like movies is a big step forward. <laughs> yeah. They probably wouldn't want movies. Slip for that. Yeah, they probably wouldn't want movies. But so, let's let's talk about yeah. about David as just a whole. Because obviously I'm sure there's many of you out there who are like, okay, yeah. This just seems like this guy's got a wild imagination and And maybe he does. We just don't know. Right. I think either way, David believes that he had these experiences Absolutely. for sure. 100%. Like, I don't think he has any devious intentions behind telling people he doesn't like, i mean he's not trying to trick people i think he truly believes them whether or not they actually happened that's up for debate right because this story is obviously very hard for many people to believe because david has no proof of these encounters other than his memories that he paints on canvas and i understand that he's not able to get any proof what is he going to do like take a photo of them or bring one of them down i mean there's really not a way to prove it if it is true but mm -hmm. Of course, if you can't prove something, there's going to be a lot of skeptics, but there are a lot of believers as well. And just to clarify, David has not taken any medications or been under psychiatric care. Aside from his alien encounters, David has led a pretty normal life. His stories have also remained pretty consistent throughout the years. That is one thing you can give him credit for is he's, he is very consistent and he, he doesn't really embellish at all. Well, and I think, I mean, as well, far <laughs> embellish further than. Right, right. Yeah. 
But also, I think it's important to note that he he doesn't take any medications. I mean, as far as we know, that there's there he's a totally normal guy. There's mm-hmm. nothing, you know. There's no, you know, disorders or any sort of mental health issues there that we're aware of. But he also has never been under psychiatric care. So how do we even truly know that? True. Just saying. True. True. <laughs> But not only did David see the aliens at night, but they also visited him during the daytime as well. So he doesn't think that he can just chalk up these experiences to some wild dreams. Which I think that's that's one of the biggest theories I think most would yeah. have is that this is some sort of dream that they're having. Or I, I thought maybe he's like lucid dreaming. Yeah. And in his lucid too. dreams, he's, you know, having these encounters that feel totally real, but in, are, are in fact dreams. David's artwork does seem to be a way of healing for him and connecting with others who have had similar experiences because there are tons of people out there who have had all types of wild alien encounters or religious experiences and sexual experiences, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, 40 million Americans say they have seen or know someone who has seen a UFO. Mm -hmm. So 40 million people see a UFO and then, I mean, there's not exact stats on alien abductions as far as I know, but it's there's a good chunk of people that have claimed similar experiences to David. That's the thing with David, right? Is there's doesn't seem to be a lot of motive to make all of this up. Like what is he gaining from it? And he's dedicated a lot of time, you know, to his artwork. And he doesn't really profit off of it, you know. No, there's I'm- not a ton of money in this, so that's not really a motivator for sharing his experiences and exhibiting all these paintings. No, he wouldn't even have made a dime off his artwork yeah. until the The documentary came out. He seems to just want people to know that we're not alone. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, something that you have to make up your own mind on because there is no proof. And that's why I kind of struggle with it. I mean, it does seem, (laughs) I mean, I guess all alien counters are pretty out there, but this one in particular is really hard to wrap your mind around. Um, I don't know. Janelle, what are your thoughts? Mm, sadly, I don't think I believe David. Understandable. I feel like it's almost a little too detailed in a way. Like, why was he chosen to have so many experiences, to have mm-hmm. kids with these aliens? Why him? No yeah. one's ever like come forward and said that they've also had that experience. So is he like just the chosen one of the planet? Well, actually, there are, have to been have- people that have claimed to have kids like, well, i don't know about kids like to procreate hundreds of kids with these dudes or it's gals. happened before yeah people have claimed to oh yeah oh really oh. to have hybrid children sure but hundreds i don't know about hundreds but i don't think he even knows exact an exact number mm. i don't know just some of the things he talks about really do sound like dreams like they're yeah. so weird that they would be dreams and they're so like foggy too. or i don't want to accuse him but maybe he's dabbled into psychedelic substances Mm -hmm. that have allowed him to have these experiences. Maybe he's really into meditation that have allowed him to have these experiences. It's Um, possible. Well, you kind of alluded to astral projection. And that perhaps that's what's happening is he's sort of astral projecting to another, you know, realm, as he says. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that's what he's doing. I mean, he seems to be well-versed in a lot of the ancient techniques of meditation you know going all the way back to uh the vedics and i mean if you go look into history i mean there's a lot of interesting experiences that are they're similar not not in detail to david but similar in sort of these profound Mm -hmm. experiences that people have so for so for example i'll give you some similar experiences so you can try to you know compare and contrast with with david's experience so there's obviously been a lot of people have had similar stories of alien encounters and there are other people that have reported having sex with alien beings. In 1957, a Brazilian farmer named Antonio Villas Bojas claimed that he was abducted by a circular alien spacecraft while he worked on his farm. And once he was on board the ship, human-like aliens undressed him and took blood samples from his chin. He claims that the beings then covered him in a strange gel. And then an attractive human-like alien woman with platinum blonde hair entered the room. She was naked and she had a red body hair a pointed chin, large blue eyes, and a human body. And Antonio instantly became very attracted to the woman, and they ended up having sex. And after it was over, the woman rubbed her belly and pointed to the sky. Antonio thinks that this meant the woman was going to give birth to his child in space. And after that, he was taken off of the ship. 
So maybe these aliens have taken people like Antonio and David to create a colony of human alien beings. And why they do that obviously isn't super clear. But I think I think some of it has to do, because if you think about one of the biggest things among alien experiencers is that, and this is shared among many people, including including people like Dr. Greer. And a lot of people think he's a he's a quack too. But it's like one of the, the biggest thing is it's all about intention. If you intent, you know, if you put your intentions out there and, and do it in good faith that you want to experience these things, maybe these aliens or extraterrestrials are looking for people who are open enough to experience these things because the average person is too skeptical, you know, too much of a skeptic or just can't open their mind enough to accept that these things could be reality. So therefore they don't interface with people like that. And the people that they do interface with are to most of us, we would just look at as crazy, but in fact they are the most open-minded people of them all. Mm. And that's why they actually allow these people to have these experiences because they're not going to become, you know, skeptical about it. They're going to, they're going to accept it and just roll with it versus being like, did I really do that and question it? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. What do you think about that? I think that's a good point, actually. It's kind of interesting. It's about intentions. About. Like Maybe part there's... of like the whole CE5 initiative is going out and meditating and calling out essentially through meditation um, and telepathy to mm-hmm. the stars. Mm-hmm. And what happens? We see that craft show up that, you know, he claims have captured alien beings on camera and on photographs and they actually their presence is detected. And so for me, when I think about alien abductions, I'm thinking, well, maybe these people are just putting so much of that out into the universe that these signals are actually being picked up by these these aliens and the rest of us are just just not putting that out there so we're not getting those experiences back. Does that make sense? But how does that explain David's initial experiences because he wasn't putting any of that out at first. They just showed up. Well, he was in a way because the guy was a, the guy was obsessed with sci-fi and and from a That's young true. young age. I Maybe mean, they he could was, just sense the open mind. Right. He was already mm-hmm. open to the concept of aliens mm-hmm. and spacecrafts and was was obviously, you know, open yeah. to that, so that wouldn't freak you. Because think about it, if you're somebody who hates sci-fi, hates all of that, and you have an alien or some kind of creature show up, and you're not used to seeing that, that's going to scare the shit out of you. So why the hell would these aliens or creatures take that chance of scaring you and something going wrong, or or, you know, causing harm to you in a traumatic way to where? You know, you're scarred for life because you had this encounter with an alien versus somebody who's actually seen something similar before and would be able to recognize what's happening to them without freaking out and accept the experience. Right? I would like to believe him. I would too. But it's just, I don't know, it's just so hard to be like, yeah, I take his word. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I believe in aliens and I believe that people have encountered them. Mm before it's just really hard to fully buy like the whole story mm-hmm. but then i know he's like i never i don't care if you believe me i guess right. he's made it really clear like i could give a shit if you believe me or not mm-hmm. it is what it is so i mean i don't know maybe i think that's the thing that makes me kind of you know stay on the skeptic side but not become a non-believer completely because david doesn't seem like the type that would just make this up. It doesn't seem like he has a huge ego and he's no. like obsessed with people believing him. He really just doesn't care. He's such a chill dude mm-hmm. that it kind of makes you think, I mean, and who are we to say right. your experiences are wrong right. mm-hmm. or, you know, didn't happen. We don't right. know. Right. Well, think about it from his perspective too. Think about how, how brave he had to have been to come forward and be a part of a documentary and put yeah. all this out there. He knows what people are going right. to say. And people think. are like, yeah, I mean, you go, look, you go look at comments and Reddit. I mean, pe- everybody's just like, people are calling him a schizophrenic uh, yeah. who likes painting. I mean, people are saying the most judgmental shit out there. And I'm just like, you don't fucking know. You are the judgmental. You, your comment right <laughs> there is the very reason nothing fucking happens for you. And you don't ever experience anything profound. And that's a good point is like because you're putting that out. I mean, it it comes down to spirituality at the end of the day. And this is why this ties into spiritual and religious experiences and people's claims of miracles. And there's people that write New York Times bestsellers on seeing going to heaven and coming Mm -hmm, back. I mean, mm -hmm. this is all the same boat where all these experiences, these profound experiences that 
nobody has concrete physical proof like this can't. table because yeah. it's not possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the experience is taking place in another realm that we cannot capture in any way, shape or form other mm -hmm. than through our consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so people just automatically chalk it up to, well, if I can't see it, touch it, touch it or feel it, it's not real. But that's just an yeah. ignorant way to look at the world because the world is way more than just what our five senses can see. Yeah. We already know there's light and everything else happening. I mean, there could be spirits whirling around us at all times and we just can't see it with the naked eye. So people like to say, well, ghosts aren't real. And it's like, okay, they're not real to you because you can't see them with your two eyes. Mm -hmm. But what if, what if they're there and they can be seen with other forms of light and other lenses? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, it's I've, hard to pick and choose, you know, who to believe when so many people have experiences. And I think it's interesting that for all of civilization, ancient cultures, you know, have written about being visited by what they call like gods or goddesses or absolutely angels. And like you were kind of saying, Josh, whatever it is, we all come from the, as what the Macklemore would say, whatever God you believe in, we all come from the same one. It's true. It's like whatever is out there, if there is something out there, whether that's a God, mm -hmm. an alien, us in a different realm, mm -hmm. angels, whatever, the ghosts, you know, some, it sounds like something's got to be out there because these people have been having mm -hmm. these experiences for thousands and thousands of years. But maybe we're just like too closed minded now to have mm -hmm. those types of experiences that ancient civilizations have had. I don't know. Or maybe we've become like too exploitive. Mm hmm. For them to well, want I, th to. I think it's a it's a double sided issue. I think it's I think it's yes. I think it's harder to believe people's experiences because there are people who just straight up lie mm -hmm. because it, because there is no way to physically prove these things. Mm -hmm. It it leaves a, a opportunity for people to exploit it, and that's yeah. our biggest problem in the world is yeah. people see where they can exploit these things yeah. that a lot of times are sacred and should be celebrated and should be studied, and instead they go and they just lie. And and are totally fraudulent in order to better themselves or you know gain something from it versus yeah and so it tarnishes everything it's like yeah it, and that's what kind of keeps me on the skeptical side because there are a lot of people yeah. that are are charlatans and it's that are frustrating. leading people astray thinking you know to act speaking like they know the truth mm -hmm. when in fact they're not they should also be admitting well this is my truth yeah but this is, it may not be the reality for everybody and david does that you know he yeah. i mean he doesn't box anyone in or claim like i have the answers and everyone should believe me he's it's his personality that makes me believe him a little more i mean and and just the other thing too that i mean it's also hard when you look at his story without knowing more about alien abductions mm -hmm. and you don't look at all the all the data and the amount of people that have come forward and hear other abduction stories and you really do start the similarities. drawing similarities yeah absolutely there's absolutely crossover between them i mean to me it seems like the gray alien thing is like there's there's a good chance that that is yeah. that is yeah, a, a real reality mm -hmm. that there is some sort of mantis too yeah the mantis mm -hmm. is that another comes up again big and one. again and also these hybrid beings. I mean, the hybrid thing is very interesting. And, you know, a lot of the stories surrounding alien abductions has to do with genetic experimentation. It's like, mm -hmm. and it kind of makes sense. I mean, if you had a if you had a species from another world here observing us, they have this advanced technology, they're able to observe without being seen most of the time that, you know, they're trying to figure out ways to perhaps better their, their species or create a hybrid species just like we create hybrid animals all the time we cross genetics all the time create new new types of of dogs and yeah. you know all these different things it's like it's not that far off that a more advanced civilization would be trying to do the same thing here or right? for all we know we came from some other civilization and we're in theory hybrid beings right and then we've you know evolved to what we are now but maybe our we originated as grays and so when we say, oh, they're part human, part alien, like maybe it's all in the same one. We're just kind of like a different, like dogs. There's yeah. different breeds, but they're right. all still a dog, fish. We you know, share anything. DNA. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. I mean, it goes back. I mean, it really is a, uh, 
a philosophical idea that you go all the way back to the creation of the universe, right? And and you look at all the theories there and like how did how did everything come to be? And that's what religions have that's why religions are around is because they all claim to have the answers to how the the universe began and how we all came to be. But when you look at all the religions and you know the religion that I grew up in, it, it's a lot of the stories and a lot of there's similarities there. I mean, mm -hmm. Jesus is rising into the sky and like uh, you know, there's people people coming back from the dead. There's all there's all sorts of experiences that people might, you know, if you never read the Bible before and you read the Bible, you'd be like, holy shit, this is crazy. Like what's going yeah, on in here? Some, some wild stuff in there. Right. For sure. So it's like it's all relative, right? It's all just relative to what you know and, and what, mm -hmm. and you know, your skepticism is based on what you don't know. You're mm -hmm. always skeptical about what you don't know and what you haven't experienced yourself. So I think the best way to go about these, these sort of stories and people is like, you all, you always keep an open mind unless you're mm -hmm. able to concrete, you know, find a concrete piece of evidence to suggest that that person is lying for an alter, you know, an alternate reason, then I think, take the person's word for it doesn't mean that you have to doesn't well, mean that you follow them you know to, i think if we took everyone's word for their experiences though we'd i mean it's conflicting it doesn't make sense to believe everyone at the same time like i definitely do not believe david 100 percent. i'm open to the idea that he could be telling the truth but i'm not like full on board david's the man he knows what's well, what, up what, all of this so, is real so if by not believing david what does that do for you allows me to stay open-minded the, but I'm how not, does that affect you, though? If you were to say, I believe David had these experiences, how does that actually directly affect you? Because then I'd be saying I believe in something I don't believe in. I need more. I'm open to it. I could believe in it. I think it's a possibility. Do you think we're alone? How positive are you that we are alone in the universe? We are definitely not alone. I believe so 1,000%. So boom, that shatters all of that. Because Why? if you believe that you were not alone in the universe and that... That means I have to believe David's right and has the the. No, answers? I'm not saying David had, but David's that validates David's experience to mm -hmm. to a certain extent. I see what you mean. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he's having this experience with extraterrestrials. Well, that suggests that we're not alone in the universe. So by saying that I believe we're not alone in the universe, but not validating David's experience doesn't mean I'm not saying that you like but join. But that means his I would have to believe every single person's alien experiences, and I know there are so many people out there who are. Right. I mean, these stories. Certain don't, people. I'm not yeah. saying all. Pe I'm saying the people that you can. Because some so people. I can't believe that aliens are 100% real, that we are not alone in the universe without believing David fathered 100 I'm alien babies. Until somebody can give you a reason to not believe them, why not believe? Because them? it's in the sense of like, I like we for sure believe that we're not alone. Do we have proof? No. Do we have concrete proof? No. So Josh is saying, like, why you don't believe? have con concrete proof that David's not right. I see your argument in the sense of like, you don't have concrete proof that we're not alone, but, but you believe it wholeheartedly. There's, but there's nothing wrong there's with There's reasons faith. why that I'm I saying, believe that aliens do exist. There's, you know, going have back faith to faith in people though is what I'm saying. Is but like, I don't you have, have faith, faith in that, people because people are fucking <laughs> so then liars. You're skeptic, not that then David you're a is skeptical. Person. Yes, I am. Yes, I am skeptical and proud to be skeptical. <laughs> that, I think that is healthy. And that's fine. See, good. I take a different perspective. I I believe everyone. <laughs> I believe until, but until I see evidence otherwise, is what I'm saying. Is like I'm I'm capable of figuring out if people are bullshitting or not. But why do you have to believe? Why do we have to be on a side of belief or not believing? Why can't we just be? I'm somewhere in the middle. Because he might be telling the truth. He might have experienced those things. It might have been dreams. It might be something else. I don't know. Because so you're how discounting can I say, another human being's experience that they've had. Well, is that fair to say that he and and there's no evidence to suggest that the dude is out of his mind or the dude is on drugs? There's no evidence. But there's to no evidence this. to suggest that he's. There's not no evidence either. to suggest that there's life elsewhere in the universe. But you believe no, there that. is evidence. I, that's what I was just saying. There are crop circles, the, the messages. But I could pick the, that apart. There's million skeptics would pick all of those things. So what I'm saying is it's like, but how can they? There is no way to prove that these crop circles could be made by humans. There, and that's just one example. I have plenty of reasons to believe that aliens are real. There are so many more documented encounters. There's documented alien abductions. There's documented. Yeah. There's, Yes, of course, I believe Multiple. in alien abductions in general, but do I believe David specifically 1000% I would hang my so hat on it that David So what is your reason for not believing David? Because there's not enough proof for me. Unfortunately, I wish there so was more. So that's every alien abduction. That's every encounter. Exactly. That's why I don't, I don't think there's one 
alien encounter out there that I would say I believe 100%. I don't not believe them. I'm open to it, but I, I need more. And I'm sorry. That's just the way I am. I'm not going to just say I believe in things to like <laughs> All right. make you happy. There you have it, folks. <laughs> Josh is this like, is believe. where we get <laughs> We're having a fight here. No. People might think I'm bullying you. Again, like oh, boy. Bigfoot oh, 2.0. Girls against the boy. We mm. we this is how we do it at our house, all right? You would never <laughs> survive at our house. This is how you have good But this is how you get this is how you get Our deep kids going to get into this with us one day. You gotta, do you think our kids going to be a believer or a skeptic? Oh, 100%. Per, they're going to I'm going to convince them. Oh, boy. oh, we'll see. We'll have to see. Cuz here my whole thing is like <laughs> I'm going to convince them. <laughs> What's your whole thing? You could say any experience that you have as a human being is not not real not legit because Why? because nobody else witnessed it so i went Do, to panera today and you today. had no evidence there's no evidence of you ever you could say i went to you panera know, and i have evidence of it. it's i saw on my phone. brad pitt at panera today and <laughs> why is brad pitt in denver but then people would have a belief a way to not believe that because yeah why the fuck is brad pitt at but yeah, that's panera in denver but that's okay let me find a local <laughs> celebrity for you. Hang on. <laughs> Who's a local celebrity? But you know what I'm saying is like, it's the same, like you're, to me, it's the same thing. It's the same thing as if I, I had this, you know, I saw this, you have, it's like UFOs. Then you're saying that people that believe in UFOs are, it's, it's all, it's no, not real. No, because a lot of people have video evidence. But how do you, but. There are skeptics out there that pick apart every UFO video and say that's good. Fake. I'm glad there are because half of them are fucking fake as hell, dude. I mean, there's so much bullshit out right. there. I think to believe everyone's experiences but that's your and job. everyone's that's your experience. Is it that is what I'm that is my point, folks. My point point <laughs> being is that you need to critically think through everything you do in life. Every experience you have, even though it seems perfectly real to you, you need to critically think through that because yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. What's your point? That's what I'm saying is that's that like, there's that's a like you're backing up what I'm saying now. Right. But I'm saying you need to critically think through everything. Yes, that that's you exactly experience. what I'm saying, including David's experience. I need to critically think about it. And my right. critical thinking says that maybe, maybe I like to look at everything <laughs> with a little dash of maybe because we don't fucking know. These right. could be dreams. We do not know. And I'm just not going to hang my hat on anything that I don't have enough proof on. But I'm not I'm saying, saying it's it's bullshit. Whether it's he's full of it. No, I'm actually very open to David because, like I said, he doesn't have this ego attached. And he why would he make all this up? And is oh no, I mean he's dedicated so, so much time with him. his paintings. So you're a believer. No, I have told <laughs> you a million times. I am skeptical, but I am open. To I don't it. think this is a black What's and the white harm? thing. What's the no, harm in believing be. though? Because I don't believe it. And that would be saying something that's not true. I think I think this is hard too because I don't know. It's it's different. My my perspectives on things have changed a lot. And I think for a long time, you know, I went away from religion and thinking that it, thinking like you do. And and thinking that you know, there's just if there's no definitive proof, then therefore it doesn't exist. No, that's not what I'm saying. That is exactly oh the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm saying if there's not enough definitive proof, then I land in the maybe zone. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Why be a maybe? Because what's, I want to what's be. What's the and benefit of being a maybe? Because it keeps me open to things. And I don't want to be that a person who believes everything. Because then you're going to end up believing some bullshit. If you believe in everything, you're going to fall I'm not saying believe everything. everything. I'm saying believe the things that leave you no reason but to believe. That they, they, there is no reason not to believe it. So what's the hurt? I have in some reasons it? to be, to not believe. What's it? the hurt not believing David's story? I don't know though, because what if I'm like, oh, Charlie can talk. My dog can talk. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, give me the proof. And I'm Janelle's like, well, paintings of Charlie talking. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, but what's the reason not to believe that Charlie can talk? Yeah. Why? What not? is the reason? Yeah. Exactly. Why not? So you think Charlie can talk? <laughs> if Charlie can talk, Charlie so can talk. So if you believe oh, every single person's claim on this earth, it, even if they have no proof, then you will honestly be a fool but because you believe no, no. <laughs> but that's that makes not, no I'm sense. not saying blindly believe i'm saying believe when there is no reason not to believe if there is a so reason you to not believe then you, believe then you don't believe right. then you do not believe it's but i'm no i don't think i disagree with that completely i don't think it's either believe or not believe okay. i think you can fall in the middle okay and have a healthy amount of skeptic skepticism about something I think and still be open that it is possible do you, so are you saying josh that you believe david 100 percent I do. I think David. I think David. So you would bet your life that 
that that David's true. That his experience. Beth, what does that mean? <laughs> I get burned at the stake if I if I'm wrong. And well, if you're that I don't convinced see... that you are 100 percent David is true, then wouldn't you, in theory, be comfortable betting your life? So now I have to gamble. <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's what you're putting us in that place well, where you either have to believe or you don't. So let's hear it. No, but I'm not. I'm not saying that you have to to be that way. I'm just saying I'm trying to explain my perspective to you versus your I get perspective your perspective you're is that i don't see a reason there's no hurt in believing in his story oh. when i have no reason not to that doesn't affect me in any it doesn't change anything about me well if i believe his story see to me it does because if i believe i truly believe and i'm not just saying i believe in all things that people say even when i don't feel until proven otherwise okay if i did that my brain would be fucked right now because there are so many claims and so many pe there's no way that they're all true. What's that dude up in Colorado Springs? That nut job. What's his name? <laughs> I don't know. What's that guy? What? The dude who has literally had the alien come up in his back porch and oh, was filming God, it. Stan, we all decided Stan. 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 <laughs> right. Do you believe Stan? No, because I because I have evidence to, to prove that he's not who he says but he is. But what if you didn't have that evidence? You would just believe him even though he's totally full of shit? Clearly, until I have evidence to not believe, sure, it doesn't do any it, whatever. If that's what Stan wants to do, then that's Stan's experience. I'm not saying that it doesn't affect me or the rest of the world. And that's exactly what I'm saying with David is I don't, I fully respect but his why be like half and, in and half out you know because I, mean? I like to be, and okay, I think that's, and that's a fine. good way to be. Totally sometimes. fine. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you can't be like that. I'm just saying that from I my have, perspective, it doesn't make it just is like. Why leave yourself in the in in the the in between zone? Because I like to zone. be. Okay. I'm much more comfortable in the in between zone. Okay. Because I've gone down the road of believing everything, and then I've had to learn mm -hmm. that a lot of things I believed were wrong, and with proof that they were wrong. And I think that if you are going to be a believer in this type of stuff in any way, that if you want other people who are totally like, I don't believe in that shit. You yeah. sound insane. That if you want them to. At, at all take you seriously or listen to you then you have to have some type of skepticism otherwise these people are gonna be like oh you just believe everything and so how are you ever gonna allow like give yourself the chance to educate those who have such a closed off mind and don't believe anything if you're over here like i believe absolutely everything <laughs> that's exactly what i'm saying janelle thank you bottom line is we agree to disagree. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> and we still are in love. Oh, my God. <laughs> love and saucers, no, baby. You're pregnant and you're getting a divorce now over this yeah. fucking David I mean, who story. knows? I could have an alien in there. You don't know he what I'm going to He looks like a little alien. He really does. I have to put a screenshot in. <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, we don't really know shit. <sighs> we do, none of us know. That's the thing. Is like I'm just not comfortable... Believe, you don't like going, you don't believe in blind in, faith though at all. No, because I want I want to fully believe in something. But what if there's things that you can't ever? There's this is <laughs> my go again. Sorry, this is never gonna I end. just can't. I'm just like it's five thirty. Janelle's trying to get home. Can't. Charlie's got shit to do. <laughs> Please. <laughs> blind faith is not a thing anymore. It seems. It seems like the I world has moved good. away from blind faith. Good because look how much blind faith has screwed us in so many ways through religion. Mm -hmm. um, all blind encounters. faith without critical thinking, sure. Yeah, that's what blind I'm saying. faith with. So that's where I am. Blind faith critical with critical th right, thinking. But give right, right, right. So I think I think I made my point. I think you just made my point. I think we can put a uh, YouTube poll in the video. Ooh, so oh, yeah, we let's should do, do that. Uh, I'll figure out a way to do that. And we'll see. Does anybody share who's our on, perspectives? Yeah. Let us know. I mean, I I just want to say, for the record, I fully believe that David could be telling the truth. He could be. And people could have these experiences. I just know there are too many people that are having them that conflict, that there's no way they're all telling the truth. And to me, I don't feel the need to say whether or not I believe in something. There's just, I'm open Boom. Could be, could not be. I love the maybe zone. There you go. The maybe zone. I live comfortably there. Mm -hmm. It's very come, nice. Come stay in the maybe zone. Hey, it's better than being in the not possible oh, zone. <laughs> Just saying. I'm not saying it's all BS. Actually, I think I was pretty open-minded to David. Yeah. Considering like when I first started watching his thing, I was like, That's what I'm saying. oh boy. Oh boy. Especially when he showed <laughs> that one painting of him like 
ejaculating in a Jizzing cup. Jizzing in a cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then I thought, you know, hmm, maybe they would have some interest and it would make sense. You know, human experimentation with aliens, that all, I think, is all very possible. So, Agreed. Great. Glad we agree on, on that. I liked learning about David's story. Yeah. I respect David. I think he's Absolutely. a fantastic artist. He seems like a very nice man. And Go, he, might, he might be onto something. He might have totally experienced all these things. In, and that's in that. In one way or another. Boom. Yeah. That's there that. All right. Well, Mike, drop. Well, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Well, we will go ahead and wrap up today's episode there, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully you found this episode of the Malhar podcast interesting. Hopefully people can have fun to. when we like banter like this. It seems like whenever we get a little heated, people think we're actually fighting. No, this is not real fighting. No, Trust this is fun me. for us. We Trust love me. it. Yes, we love to go back and forth. It's good. I mean, we should have differing opinions on some things. Like, yeah. it's fine. Like, yeah, that'd be really it, unhealthy. It'd be boring if we just, for like, yeah, yeah, we're all like the same thing and believe the same thing. And, you know, and yeah. also it's, it's the beauty it's of the universe. The, the, the different perspectives we bring. I come from a very, very opposite background from Kendall. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. raised completely opposite from both of these guys. And like, so like I have a different perspective on sort of, of other, you know, other things and faith and sort of these other spirituality in, in a certain sense because i i grew up in a different environment so it's yeah, just yeah. and you guys had zero of that growing up so mm -hmm. but i think that kind of explains why we are both the way we are because right. i feel you you feel the need to either put yourself on the believing side or the non-believing side with everything and i totally get that i respect that i grew up in the maybe zone forever mm -hmm. like right. my parents, Your were parents were like, are all maybe right. might, be yeah. sure. might be not whatever which yeah, is, what do which you is think? Fine. And yeah, everybody's so entitled to that. do that. And I, I, I just to make it clear, I 100% think everybody's entitled to live and think the way that they want to. Yeah. I, I was just sharing my personal opinions and what I've started to realize in my life is that it's it's such a short ride. You know, what's what's the hurt in, in believing and having blind faith in, in certain things without mm. having things that... And I think there is a lot of hurt that. available. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. That's Thanks for watching it. today. We'll see you guys next yes, week. Yes. Keep on taking your mind a, a mile, mile higher. higher.